What would happen to us and our planet if it became as big as the sun? The diameter of the Earth is 8,000 miles. Crossing it is like driving back and forth across the USA three times. That doesn't sound like much, right? Well, how about repeating this journey 305 more times? Just imagine the gas expenses. This is the diameter of the sun, about 865,000 miles. Compared to our Earth, the sun is unimaginably huge. So what will happen to us if we catch up with it? There are four possible scenarios, depending on what we mean when we say the size of the sun. Scenario 1. The Earth becomes as large as the sun, but its mass remains the same. A colossal planet with the mass of a teeny tiny Earth. First, say bye-bye to gravity. The more massive the planet, the stronger its gravity is, and vice versa. Such a lightweight planet simply wouldn't be able to attract anything to itself. Gravity creates all the heavy substances. Everything, from pebbles to entire continents, is held thanks to it. I believe you've already guessed what would happen without it. We'd all turn into dust particles. Yes, the Earth simply becomes a dust cloud. Oh, and to add fuel to the fire, the gravities of other planets stretch us to the sides, leaving no chance to collect our planet back together again. This scenario doesn't look very good, does it? By the way, even if the Earth somehow remained a planet, life couldn't have originated on it in these conditions. There would have been a considerable distance between the center of the Earth and its surface. And remember, the planet's mass is minimal, so no gravity. It just wouldn't be able to hold the atmosphere. And without the atmosphere, living organisms cannot develop. Not like it would have mattered. The Earth now is a cloud anyway. So now this cloud, weighing about 10 times heavier than Jupiter, is gathering in space. As a result, it collapses and turns into a star. Say hi to the new sun. Scenario 2. This works both as a separate scenario and as a result of the previous one. The Earth becomes as large as the sun and gets its mass. Now we have two suns. We become a so-called binary star system. You know what that means. It's time to destroy our entire solar system. Imagine having two centers of mass in one system. The planet's orbits become unstable, perturbed by such a sudden change. Once they get closer to our X-Earth, they collapse immediately, either from tidal forces or the X-Earth's impact. Yes, even gas giants. Looking at you, Jupiter. Do you know which one survives and finally gets its revenge on us? Pluto. It would probably be the last remaining X planet in the entire system. It's too far away to notice any changes, except for an increase in the mass of the center of the system. So Pluto's orbit comes closer to our two star system, and that's it. The Earth and the Sun would have to accept that Pluto would be their only friend now. The protoplanetary disk that formed our system billions of years ago doesn't exist anymore. So, no more planets can be created in our system. That's all well and good, but what about the Earth itself? What would life be like? Let's see. The nights and days now last longer because of the increase in the Earth's rotation time. There is probably a significant temperature drop in the North and South Poles. Even on our current small planet, they get sunlight scarcely. So, if the Earth's size increased, the area of the poles receiving sunlight would decrease even more. On a positive note, there's a lot more space now. No more overpopulation. The planet's size is so huge that it would take you years to get from one point to another. Yeah, if you think about it, we'd probably be very lonely there. But hey, who knows? Maybe rockets would become our primary means of transportation. Yeah, that would have been cool. There are many vast uncharted areas that no human ever saw or visited. We also wouldn't know about the existence of many different civilizations and tribes. Centuries pass and many of us go away without ever meeting other people or learning about them. 
and that's if we can walk at all. Our bones cannot support our weight with such a considerable gravity, and our hearts have to work twice as hard to keep us alive. The birds can't fly anymore. Nothing can, precisely. All the existing trees fall down, and the new ones grow very close to the earth, like grass. Talking about the trees, how is our ecosystem doing? Well, not good. If we don't appreciate the environment on our small earth right now, imagine what would happen if we had such a massive space at our disposal. I even assume that our tons of garbage would have overpowered even those endless supplies of trees and clean water that we would have in our new large home. Our machines and robots have to be huge to do at least something now. That's because even ordinary farms now are the size of the U.S. states. I also assume that it would be much darker than we're used to. The Earth is so small now. Imagine what would happen when our planet becomes the size of the sun itself. Less sunlight means that we'd probably need an artificial sun. Also, the temperature differences on the planet's surface would be huge. If you're surprised, you probably underestimated the size of the sun. It's almost 110 times larger than the Earth. Our new Earth's equator equals our current Earth's 35 equators. Oh, and remember Pluto? Well, it's our only moon now. The first one would have probably crashed into us a long time ago, making us share the fate of the dinosaurs. In that case, all the water would likely evaporate from our planet. Anyway, there are thousands of bad possibilities, but let's just move on and focus on something good. Scenario 3 Same thing, but the Earth retains its density. Now this one is interesting. We're no longer a planet. We're a star now. In fact, we became even more massive than the Sun. Our planet now has a 3.9 solar mass because we need to balance our low density somehow. In short, it would be almost the same as in Scenario 2, but with more interesting long-term consequences. Since our Earth became four times as massive as the Sun, it would have burned its fuel quicker. Then it would evolve, and depending on the mass of its core, it either becomes a supernova or just blows off its outer layers to form a planetary nebula. If it goes supernova, the sun that was so close to us blasts. And now, there is just our ex-Earth, a lonely ball with a teeny tiny diameter of 12.5 miles. We're a neutron star. That is, a star made of degenerate neutron matter. That thing is ultra dense and spins very quickly, so you'd better stay away from it. If the Earth becomes a nebula, the sun collects all the dust and adds it to its mass. Now we have a slightly more massive sun and a white dwarf. The time passes, and Grandpa Sun lives out his life. It becomes a red giant after depleting the hydrogen in its core. It starts expanding and leaves its material, mostly hydrogen, on the white dwarf. That's us. When the matter reaches high enough temperatures and pressures, nuclear fusion happens. We become a nova. Yay, we're a star again. A lonely one, but a star nevertheless. So what happens next? You see, a star is a battle of opposing forces. One of them is gravity, which tries in every possible way to compress the lead into a small ball as much as possible. The second is a pile of fuel in the star's core, which, while burning, forms tons of energy and substantial hot temperatures. As long as these forces are in balance, the star lives. But when the star's fuel runs out, the star cools down. The pressure inside it drops. This means gravity has won. It squeezes the star with all its might. And as a result, the star goes, hooray! In just 15 seconds, the brightest light you've ever seen in your life flashes. And our ex-Earth goes supernova, leaving a stunning nebula behind. Anyway, don't worry. It's actually impossible for a rocky planet to be the size of the sun. Only other stars can be that large. But wait, why is our Earth so small while the other planets are enormous? Do they just keep growing or do they stop at some point? The more mass you add, 
the more compression you get. As planets become more massive, the gravitational compression increases. They stop growing when their mass reaches roughly 1.7 times that of Jupiter, or 540 masses of the Earth. After that, adding more mass to a planet will make it smaller, because the compression becomes stronger. In other words, our little thought experiment is impossible. I hate to break this to you, but money isn't actually made of paper, which also proves that money doesn't actually grow on trees. Most banknotes are 25% linen and 75% cotton, which is why they have such a distinct look and feel. Back in the 19th century, money was made of parchment paper. That's why people could easily counterfeit it. Unlike now, the Eiffel Tower is almost 6 inches taller during the summer. When you heat up some substance, its particles start to move more actively and take up a bigger volume. That's something they call thermal expansion. When the temperature lowers, the substance contracts again. Such an effect is more prominent in gases, but you can also track it in liquids and solids, including iron. If you make a snowball and try to set it on fire using your lighter, the thing won't melt. The snow will first turn black, then it'll start to vanish, but you'll get no water. There's nothing supernatural about this phenomenon. The snow is melting, but you don't see it because the structure of the snowflakes. They kind of wick away the melted water, and it gets absorbed by the remaining relatively loose-packed snowball. Our moon used to have an atmosphere. Several volcanic eruptions happened on Earth's natural satellite around 4 billion years ago. They released immense volumes of gas, trillions of tons. It was so much that the gas didn't have enough time to escape into space. That's how an atmosphere was formed. Just like a chicken egg, an ostrich egg will contain a chick embryo only if the egg was first fertilized by a male ostrich. Otherwise, you'll only find whites and a huge yolk inside of it. The size of the yolk is equal to around 24 chicken yolks, so one ostrich eggs can easily feed a squad of 10 people. But ostrich eggs aren't all that edible. Those who tried them say that they taste a lot like chicken eggs, fatty, buttery, and kind of sweet but the flavor is more intense. They're also richer in magnesium and iron than chicken eggs, but contain fewer vitamins A and E. One ostrich egg will give you about 2,000 calories, while the average chicken egg only contains 75 calories. Cooking and eating them is a chore, so you'll unlikely have them for breakfast every day. Their shell is extremely thick. You can step on eggs with both of your feet and they won't break. That's why if you want to cook an omelet using an ostrich egg, you're going to need a drill or a hammer, and also a really big skillet to fit an egg of that size. No bigger. Yeah, like that. Boiling the egg will take almost 90 minutes. Not so long ago, scientists decided that dinos' family trees had to be redrawn for the first time in 130 years. Apparently, two species of dinosaurs had to be grouped together from the very beginning. Those were the lizard-hipped meat-eaters, like T-Rex, and bird-hipped vegetarians, such as the Stegosaurus. People are still evolving. Scientists have been tracking several millions of human anomalies. It turns out, some harmful genes are slowly but surely getting filtered out of human DNA. Sound travels almost four times faster underwater than it does in the air. That's why divers often have problems with figuring out the direction of sound. Bananas contain potassium, and this element is slightly radioactive. On the bright side, you need to eat 10 million bananas before radiation can negatively affect you. Meanwhile, out in space, shadows are darker on the moon than on our planet. That's because the atmosphere on Earth scatters more sunlight. But if you could visit the moon, you'd observe shadows so dark, you wouldn't be able to see where you were going. Also, you'd notice fresh footprints on the lunar surface. People haven't set foot there in a few decades, but the footprints look as if they were left just yesterday. Since there's no water or wind on the moon, nothing can erase these footprints, so they can stay there in their original form for millions of years. Sure, if you were about to go to space, one of the first things you would think of would be your spacesuit. But did you know that it's possible to survive in space even if you aren't wearing any protection? Well, don't get your hopes up yet. You'd last for no more than 15 seconds. That's how long it would take you to lose consciousness because oxygen will stop coming to your brain. The ocean performs many functions. For one thing, it produces 50 to 80% of all the oxygen on our planet, which means it keeps us alive. 
but it also helps the internet to function. So when you're laughing at a funny dog video or binge watching your favorite series, yep, thank the ocean for that. Disneyland's airspace has the protection level of the White House and the Kennedy Space Center. It's prohibited to fly over the theme park without a special waiver. The restriction was introduced in 2003 for security reasons. So now you will never see a plane or even a single drone flying over the park. How about a butter applicator in the form of a glue stick? With this invention, making sandwiches in the morning will become so much easier. The main challenge is to not confuse it with a real glue stick. Bacon Lip Balm is a great addition to those butter sticks. This product is already being sold online. Imagine rubbing your lips with a piece of fried bacon before going out. Not really my thing, but you do you. Bananas are delicious and convenient. Thanks to their dense skin, they won't break when you carry them with you. But for some people, this natural protection doesn't seem to be enough. They don't like brownish marks on the yellow peel. Especially for them, one of the main inventions of the 21st century. This is a banana suitcase. The container will protect your banana from the dangers following it everywhere. How can you get your cat to work off the money you spend on its food? Let it clean the room while you're away. Japanese engineers came up with cat duster slippers. The cat walks on the floor and rids your home of dust at the same time. But I'm not sure your pet will like the idea. Hugs are very beneficial to health. They relieve stress and help your body produce endorphins, the hormone of happiness. The image of a happy girl in the Wendy's logo was inspired by the daughter of the fast food chain's creator, Dave Thomas. Wendy is her nickname. If you look closer, you'll notice her collar spells out the word mom. Whether intentional or not, it became something to mean a homely feel the restaurant gives its guests. 941 set as the time in iPhone's ads, isn't a random choice of numbers. In 2007, Steve Jobs first introduced the iPhone to the public after a 41-minute presentation at exactly 9.41 a.m. The first Apple logo was designed in 1976 and featured Sir Isaac Newton sitting under a tree with an apple about to fall on his head. It seemed too complex and unclear to many, so Steve Jobs wanted it replaced. Some people have a fear of technology, aka technophobia. Now, it mostly has to do with complex new devices like computers. But it has its roots back in the time of the Industrial Revolution. It began in the 18th century when workers were afraid new machines would take their jobs. The founders of Domino's were originally planning to add a dot to the Domino's in the logo for every new place they opened. But it was growing way too fast and too big for that. So, they decided to keep just three dots for the three original locations. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. It's always drawn and shown this way, but our sun isn't yellow, orange, or even red. It's a mixture of all the colors together. If we could look at it, it would appear white. Unlike humans, cats don't have the same amount of toes on their front and back paws. They usually have five toes on their front paws, but only four on their back ones. If you've got a feline companion, go and take a look. Ever wondered what that tiny pocket in your jeans is for? It's a watch pocket and was originally intended as a place to store pocket watches. It dates back to 1879 to the first pair of Levi's jeans. Your brain uses different hemispheres to store different memories. Emperor penguins form large huddles. To share warmth and provide protection, they form a huddle that's constantly moving. This way, any of them can get a turn in the middle. Clouds look white because they're reflecting sunlight off the water droplets. When they're thin, a large portion of the light passes through, making the cloud appear white. As the amount of water increases, so does the thickness. We see it as gray. A margarita pizza has tomato, mozzarella, and basil on top to represent the colors of the Italian national flag. A delicious random fact. Ever sneezed because of a cat? Pets can be allergic to humans too because of cells shedding from our skin and hair, though it's rare. Also, it might be because of the smells we cover ourselves in every day, like deodorants and perfumes. Polar bear fur isn't white at all. It's transparent and hollow and their skin is black. Their coat camouflages so well that it can sometimes pass as a snowdrift. 
or snow dune in Arctic environments. General Sherman is the world's largest tree. Located in California, the giant sequoia is over 2,000 years old and is taller than the Statue of Liberty. Humans seem to be the only animals who really get a kick out of eating spicy food. Sure, there are benefits from eating the chilies themselves, like antioxidants, faster metabolism, and vitamin C. But we can get all that from other vegetables. There doesn't seem to be any reason to put ourselves through those hot peppers. When you eat enough carrots, your skin could turn orange. Carrots are packed with beta-carotene, a natural orange pigment. Too much of this pigment can change how you look a bit, especially in body areas with thicker skin, like your palms, soles, knees, and elbows. The ocean is blue because water absorbs the majority of red colors in the light spectrum, so there are only all the shades of blue left for us to see. The first trailer in a movie theater was shown in 1912, but for a Broadway show, not a movie. The trailers were originally played after the movie because they trailed it. Eventually, they started appearing at the beginning as viewers would instantly leave the theater once the movie had finished. There are six Mars exploration missions on or around the red planet at the moment. Does it mean that Mars is inhabited by robots? The little green men aren't saying. If the sun was the size of a front door, our planet would be the size of a nickel. In other words, the Sun could fit more than 1 million Earths. Jupiter's moon Io is 4.5 billion years old, almost as old as the planet itself. It's one of the very few bodies in the solar system with active volcanoes, and these volcanoes are powerful enough to produce spectacular views that are later captured by Earth's telescopes. By the way, Io is named after the legendary maiden who is loved by the Greek god Zeus. In the myth, Zeus turned her into a heifer in an attempt to hide her from his jealous wife, Hera. Wow, so the cow did jump over the moon. Oh, I think we could use some more cowbell. Okay, enough with the cows. Space isn't supposed to be black. There are stars everywhere. Shouldn't they light up everything around? You don't see stars wherever you look because some of them haven't existed long enough for their light to reach Earth. Saturn isn't the only planet that has rings. Gas giants Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter have rings of their own, but they're thin and almost impossible to see. NASA can convert plasma waves, radio waves, and magnetic fields into audio tracks and listen to what's happening in space. They record all kinds of intriguing sounds, from beeps to ambulance-like howls. At the same time, space itself is an eerily silent place. There are some sound waves and vibrations, but people can't perceive them. Oceans cover 70% of the Earth. On average, the ocean is eight Empire State Buildings deep, and less than 5% of its mysterious depths have been explored. It's even possible to find lakes and rivers beneath the ocean. They are denser than the rest of the water surrounding them, so you can clearly see the difference. When sharks need their morning joe, they go to a cafe too. Back in 2002, researchers found an area in the Pacific Ocean called the White Shark Cafe where great white sharks come during the winter. They simply hang out, tell jokes, and laugh at stories of how many humans they've scared, and then go back to the coast to scare us a little bit more when the weather gets warmer. Have you had a great white latte? Try one. You can taste garlic with your feet. Rub a clove right in your feet. Of course, take the socks off beforehand and wait for it. The chemical responsible for its unique smell can be absorbed through the skin, even though the clove never was in your mouth. By the way, lobsters can try out the same experiment. Well, they actually taste food with their feet. In Tibet, there are black diamond apples that aren't green or red, but dark purple. The place where they grow has plenty of ultraviolet light over the day, while temperatures drastically go down during the night, which makes the apple skin get a darker color. Australia has a lake of a naturally bubblegum pink color. The unusual color is there because of the pigment from a certain type of algae living there. There is a specific type of jellyfish that's actually immortal. Hey, I could see that as a logo for a life insurance company. The Earth is orbiting the Sun, but not at a fixed speed. We don't sense it, but it's slowing as time goes by, so our day will become 25 hours long in around 175 million years. So don't plan that extra hour in your schedule just yet. Space is huge, duh, but there's obviously lots of empty spots 
Since there are more trees, 3 trillion, on our planet than stars in the Milky Way, only about 300 to 400 billion stars. Ostriches don't actually hide their heads in the sand. When they sense danger, they lower down their head, neck, and body to the ground, which makes them a little bit less visible to predators. Their light-colored necks blend in with the sand, so it only looks like their head is hidden down there. On Earth, people are used to a beautiful sunset that's painted in hues of orange, red, and yellow. On Mars, however, the normally pinkish-red sky turns blue as the sun goes down under the horizon. It's because Mars is much further away from the sun than Earth, making the sunlight less intense. The fine dust in the Martian atmosphere absorbs the blue light and gets rid of the warmer colors that you typically see on Earth. Whether it's blue or yellow, both sunsets look spectacular. On Earth, sound waves make air molecules vibrate, which is why we're able to hear sound. Other planets and moons allow sound to travel through mediums like their atmospheres, and oceans too. In space, though, it's said that there is no sound, since there aren't any molecules to vibrate and deliver sound waves. However, not all researchers agree on this, given that space isn't just a desolate vacuum. In between the emptiness, there are clouds of gas and other stray particles. So, depending on where you are, sound waves can be possible. Humans have been exploring space for over 60 years, and the effort has certainly paid off. All the planets in our solar system have now been explored, even the dwarf planets of Pluto and Ceres. Most of the exploration was done by NASA's Voyager program, which began in 1977. Voyager 1 and 2 collected information on the planets, their moons, and their unique system of rings and magnetic fields. These twin spacecraft continue to send data back to Earth, and Voyager 1 is currently in interstellar space. In 2011, astronomers discovered an enormous water reservoir simply floating in space around a supermassive black hole called a quasar. Floating water vapors have been found throughout the universe, but they aren't that common. This particular reservoir holds around 140 trillion times the amount of water in the Earth's oceans. This one is the oldest, largest, and at more than 12 billion light-years away, it's the farthest known to humankind. 